Hello and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, as usual, I'm here with the latest from the tech and gaming world for you. Got some juicy stuff for you today and we're going to kick off today's proceedings with something from Valve as someone over there apparently did a bit of an oops. Basically what has happened is that a streaming service was revealed a touch earlier than it should have been. Now essentially what's happened here is that is, there is a domain called steam.tv and this was apparently made live a bit before it should have been. Now obviously this has now been taken down but not for several sharp-eyed people of course that managed to spot it and also take a look see as to what was going on. Now when it was actually live it was showing the Dota 2 International and to be, to be fair, in, 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 in Valve's corner here, they have thrown up their hands and just said, look, yeah, we, we put this up earlier than it should have been. And I do actually have a bit of a statement here from them, which further explains the situation, of course. And it said to CNET, quote, we are working on updating Steam Broadcasting for the main event of the International Dota 2's annual tournament. What people saw was a test feed that was inadvertently made public. However... Several outlets, including CNBC, actually managed to have a bit of a play around with the service while it was still active. And obviously, while Valve are undoubtedly trying to get this new service live in time for the Dota 2 International, which obviously is an absolutely huge event, ridiculous prizes for the players and obviously ridiculous viewership as well. It seems there is more to it than that from their research. Now, of course, there is a Steam broadcasting platform that already exists, but the Steam.tv that we actually saw briefly does seem much more powerful than the one that currently exists. So clearly Valve have put time and energy and obviously manpower into this new thing, and I highly doubt they've done all that work just to do things like Dota 2, the internationals. As big as that is, it's probably not really worth the investment to do that tournament and only that tournament. So there are obviously that perhaps Valve is trying to join the fray when it comes to streaming services and of course the juggernaut in that area is Twitch followed closely by YouTube Gaming. Now unfortunately at least at the moment or when it was made live it was only in a browser it wasn't in the Steam desktop app itself but I would imagine that with the full release this would not be the case but according to those who were actually able to have a peek there was the option to create live chats and video chats alongside the broadcasts themselves. So it's of course pure speculation that Valve is trying to enter the streaming ring, but I wouldn't really be all that surprised to see them do this, especially if they could tie it into Steam somehow. Perhaps, you know, you get a special trading card or something else that people would be sort of incentivized to want to have, you know, a special I don't know, badge or something. You know, they've done badges and things like that in the past with Steam sales, so perhaps they do something like that. It's entirely, of course, purely speculation, but I am interested to see, and Valve definitely has the cash and obviously the manpower to support a streaming service, which I'm sure takes an obscene amount of work to keep running behind the scenes to bring you your favourite streams on a daily basis. So, of course, whether or not this was just a one-off thing and they're trying to get it good for Dota 2 because obviously there's a lot of money in that or if it's a long-term thing, it's hard to say. All we know for sure is that they are obviously trying to get it up for the international and they just did a bit of an oopsie basically. Like, oh, whoops, I pressed the button when I shouldn't have pressed the button. Oh dear. So let's move on to our next topic, shall we? So this next piece of news comes to us from Samsung, or to be more exact, from an FCC filing which has revealed some of their plans for their mixed reality headsets, which is of course the Samsung HMD Odyssey. So the filing has basically revealed a new version of this particular headset. It's going to be an external sensor-free HMD Odyssey headset, which makes use of the mixed reality platform that Microsoft uses on, of course, Windows. So according to the files that are found within the filing, the new headset is apparently going to be called the HMD Odyssey Plus, which I guess says what it is on the tin. It's, it's good enough as a name, I suppose. However, if you're expecting some significant improvements versus the original in terms of its raw specifications, it does seem unfortunately that's not actually the case. But of course, it's entirely possible that some of this is placeholder information or some of this may be subject to change. This isn't by no means a confirmation that, yep, it's the same apart from these few tweaks and improvements. But at least in the filing, we can see that the 
headphone speakers, microphone placement, and all that sort of stuff, all seem to be based on the device sketches that we see in the filing, which of course are identical to the headset that already exists. So again, that is by no means a confirmation that not really a whole lot is changing. In fact, there's even some comments from The Verge and their own inside sources who say that the Odyssey Plus will feature a quote-unquote wider eye box and a new display technology called SFS, in addition to standard AMOLED. So as I said, we're going to be seeing no external trackers for this particular headset, which is definitely good. Of course, one of the main criticisms leveled against, say, the Vive, which is arguably the best virtual reality headset on the market. So that is a lot of wires trailing everywhere and all that sort of stuff. Obviously this is a mixed reality headset rather than a virtual reality headset, but you still, the point remains, having it be sort of sensor free as it were, is definitely something in the plus column. So again, this is not an official announcement from Samsung, so please take everything I have said here with a massive pinch of salt, and I do mean massive, like, you know, just, just chuck it over there. In all seriousness, all, some of this could be wrong, it could be out of date, it could be inaccurate, of course it could be 100% true as well, we just don't know. Obviously this is Samsung themselves doing this, but again, information could change, some of it could be placeholder, some of it could be updated at a later time, or it could just be, no, this is how it is and they just aren't ready to actually reveal it formally to the public yet. But it does show that they are still not giving up on this whole mixed reality thing and are continuing to try and improve the offerings that they have for the marketplace. So we're going to move on to our next topic, which is actually something mobile related, as we have some rumblings as to what Qualcomm are up to with Snapdragon. Now, of course, for those of you who like to keep your ear to the ground for all things mobile, you will, of course, know that the Snapdragon 855 is yet to be released. But despite this, we are still hearing rumblings as to what they could be doing with the 856 Snapdragon. So what do we actually have rumor-wise here? Well, according to reports, there are going to be two chipsets powering high-end smartphones for 2019, the 855 and the 865. Now obviously the 865 is going to be coming after the 855, so for Samsung and pretty much everyone ever who wants to get their foot in the door early as soon as possible with their flagship units, they're most likely going to be using the 855, but the 865 is probably going to come along with some improvements and it could possibly even be the very first 5G capable smartphone with the 856 inside, if you see what I mean. Now, due to them releasing fairly close to each other, obviously it's a reasonable assumption to say that they're still going to be using 7nm, which we do know is going to be used for the 855, so it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense for the 865 to not be using 7nm, but of course, this is all pure speculation. Now, according to the fairly famous Leica Ice Universe, who I have mentioned a few times now, we do actually have a tweet from them. It says, quote, Qualcomm is developing SDM865, which will be a complete 5G SOC. So it is going to be the first Qualcomm chip, I guess you could say, to feature a Snapdragon 850 5G modem, since the 855 might not get one if what we are hearing is actually true. Now, of course, this would not be the first time that Qualcomm have done stuff like this in the past. They've done it with the 820 followed by the 821. So again, this would kind of be in pattern for them and would kind of make sense for the other iteration to have some improvements spring into the tape, brought to the table, should I say, that the original did not have. But this is all based upon reports, so yeah, the usual caveats do apply. So we're going to move on to the big daddy of today's video, which is the RTX 2070. Now, of course, tomorrow brings with it the official reveal from NVIDIA as to what's going on with the 2080-2080 tie, and of course, all the other RTX and GTX cards that we are to be expecting from the Turing architecture. So, of course, they did finally reveal that, yes, it is Turing after all this talk of, like, is it going to be Volta? Is it going to be Ampere? Is it going to be Turing? Well, now we know that, at least. So... We've had leaks up the wazoo when it comes to what's going on with the 2080 and the 2080 tie, but today, as I said, we have something regarding the 2070. So, what do I actually have for you? Well, we have a bunch of information as to the specification, but regarding the 2070, it is going to have only 18 Turing SMs, which means a total of 2,304 CUDA calls, so 2304. Now, you may have had previous rumours and rumblings that the 2070 was only going to feature 7 gigabytes of RAM, but at least according to this report, it is actually going to feature 8 gigabytes. Now, you may wonder where this new information has come from, and it is actually 
from the mails of two sources over at videocards.com. Now the rumours don't stop there regarding this particular card my friends as we actually have a little bit of chatter as to how much it's actually going to cost. Now obviously that is the big question mark above all of these cards as everyone kind of prepares to have their wallets just absolutely destroyed when the pre-orders go live tomorrow. But according to the sources of Adored TV, we do actually have a price range for the 2070. So according to them, we're going to be seeing a price range of 300 to 500 US dollars, and it is going to be 40% faster than the GTX 1070. And according to what we know, or what we've heard, should I say, about the performance, it is actually going to be beating the 1080 as well, which would be rather impressive to say the least especially if we are right about this price range. At the moment, the consensus seems to be roughly around $400 to $500, dollars. Now that would make sense, just based on the pricing of the 1070. That is pretty much a sort of rough price range. Obviously, it depends on AOBs and all that, sort of, all that sort of stuff. It does depend on your manufacturer, whether or not you go for a special fancy edition, all that sort of stuff. But we are expecting around that price range for the 2070, which, if the performance expectations are correct, is pretty much insane. Like... That much performance for that price is just crazy. Now, obviously, it's not exactly going to be outpacing the GTX 1080 by a country mile or anything, but, you know, the fact that it is beating it at all, I think, is definitely impressive, especially, again, for the price, assuming that it is correct. So, we've not got long to wait before we know how true or false all of these leaks that we've been discussing over the last few days actually are. So... Speculate away my friends, it's not long now till we find out, but I'm definitely curious to see which one of these I'm going to be picking up because uh, they're looking pretty tasty, I'm not going to lie to you. Anyway, that has been done for this video, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time.